and the people are getting the timeless reality inshaAllah so that they can read it, understand it and then they can ask questions on the tafakkur, the contemplation, these realities. What we're trying to show and establish is the foundation for everything is tafakkur. So if they're not reading these realities of tafakkur then, then these teachings are just entertainment. But now more than ever everybody's in need of uh, certainty of faith that you know the devil's at the gate. And it's going to be more and more difficult with these connections, with these realities, with these understandings, a light that shines within the heart and the soul of the servant and that light and that emanation gives them that cer certainty of faith inshaAllah so that they can traverse these oceans of difficulty and draw closer to the Divinely Presence. This is not drawing closer to a person or a human but that they feel the presence of Allah through these lights and through these blessings and they draw closer to that reality with certainty. The shaykhs are like a portal. So we describe the portal of the flame for Sayyidina Musa he saw the portal, he went and traversed and entered into a different dimension in which Allah clarified, this is now a holy precinct, this is not the desert that you are out in. What you have just stepped into is a holy precinct and this was throughout Qur'an, this was the niche of Sitna Maryam that her existence and her chamber became a portal into the Divine the Presence. That when Sayyidina Zakariya would open the door he was astonished that food and sustenance is coming in this niche that not in, in season and not not, ex not, not able for them that they didn't have the ability to have that. So it means that these realities are reality in which Allah grants to His creation to draw near to His Divinely Presence. And so that their wujud and their, their being and their body become portals for people to draw near into this ocean and to this reality and draw near to the presence of Allah inshaAllah. Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, what is Sufism's views on alchemy? What's alchemy? <laughs> the process of trying to make gold? The reality of, of alchemy which was I think an analogy of, of how to turn iron into gold or how to turn a metal into gold to achieve the, the wealth of the material world. And tariqah is the alchemy of the heavens, how to take your iron and the, the metal and the being from this material world and turn them into the treasures of paradise. And the process of the alchemist is the shaykh in which to take your metal existence, your earthly existence, uh, 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 a reality that you're not making it to be of value and train you by the end of these, these juzbas and by the end of these tafakkurs that person is like a diamond, like a ruby from paradise, they're not anymore you know copper and metal and, and silver beyond gold and understandings of gold. They become very precious elements for Allah because they are rare. So it means the reality of alchemy was the tariqahs on how they can change people from charcoal into diamonds and how to, to bring about the reality of insan if they want to achieve it. But they have to have a himmah and a zeal in which to want to conquer that reality. And Allah's already increased the fire on the other side, so it becomes easier. You see, the other side is burning, you have nowhere to run but this way. InshaAllah. Um, As Salaamu Alaykum, Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaamu Alaykum. 
What is the difference between magnetism and the attractions of negative energy to people with positive charge? The magnetism to the attraction of negative energies. They go hand in hand, that's why all the teachings, that's why the warning in the early stages of energy that if you take this path then understand the importance of wudu, understand the importance of taweez and understand the importance of your spiritual battle. For how can somebody achieve knighthood, futuwa, chivalry if they're not uh, as, uh, armed as a knight? With all your armament, with all of all of what spiritual weapons God has given to you and you really think you're going to be fighting devils in your underwear? So it means the whole process was that, that's why the, we laid the foundation in earlier at the beginning of the year. You wash, you make wudu, you have your taweez, the taweez are, are sajils, are, are, are gifts from Divinely Presence in which to put upon yourself and unfortunately shaitan has made everyone to forget if anyone wants to google Islamic armory, Islamic warfare and Prophet Wasallam's armory from his holy helmet to his shields and his swords were all written upon it, Qur'an and all sorts of du'as. Why? One, because it has immense light and immense blessings. Two, that it had an immense power emanating from whatever was being written upon Sayyidina Muhammad his holy companions and all the nations that came after of the nations of Islam. They knew that reality, they knew to adorn themselves with the words of Allah for their protection and for, for their battle. Now shaitan made everybody to lose that and they don't know what they go and what they do on a daily basis. But our life is a spiritual battle at every moment so that the believer has to carry themselves in the same understanding. As soon as you wake up in the morning that you're seeking refuge from the attacks of shaitan and that your day is now going to be a complete struggle in Allah's way that you're able to survive that day and that you operate in Allah's way, you don't cheat and steal to, to make that day as a azab and a punishment for the servant and that, that you come back safely home to your residence and to your family. Well that's an immense struggle and shaitan knows that, oh this servant is, is going in the way of Allah I'm going to ruin them, I'm going to ruin their day and ruin their sustenance, I'm going to ruin their, their desires and, and make their income not to be halal. So it's a big struggle. When the servant understands their life is like that then they have their taweezes, they're continuously in wudu, they have their sunnah, they have their ring. If they need asa from negative energies they have their grounding. Everything that Prophet brought for us as spiritual warriors and that's on a day-to-day -day basis because Haris alaykum bin mu'mineen hu ra'uf rahim that they are extreme against the people who come against Allah but to the believers they are soft and peaceful. Means that this, this battle with unseen negativity has to be real for the servant. As a result they become sources of light and blessings towards humanity. So they carry all of their, their, their inscriptions and writings and protections and as we're moving into these difficulties these protections become more and more apparent. So anyone who doesn't understand what we're talking about, look always to the devil to understand because the angels they're not really interested in marketing. So you got it, if you have a good heart you'll see what the angels are doing. But devils they're outright openly doing whatever they want to do and they want everyone to follow. So how come these people are marking their bodies and what do those marks mean? We, we described in other talks, the, the azab and punishment of Jahannam are scorpions, spiders and creepy crawly snakes and animals. Have you seen people, why do they have spiders and scorpions tattooed upon their body and snakes all are tattooed around their body and skulls and demons, who's marking them and for what power and for what reality? 
and what do they put upon their, their weapons and their knives and their entire being? They're marking themselves. They know what type of devil is going to come and lock itself into their being by marking themselves with certain markings. That devil will be locked within that person and confined within that person for a support for them. So you just look to shaitan and you can see exactly what he's doing and it verifies all the teachings of Rahman. But Allah says, we have eyes but we're not seeing what they're doing. So it's out there, all we have to do is just look inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaam Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How can one connect to one shaykh through meditation when they don't teach meditation? Mm. Then, then that's a good question. Get the book. Ya Sayyidi As-Salamu Alaykum Forgive me but when our meditation is completed, like daily meditation, I mean when, we, when should we get up from meditation? I always get confused, what is the manner of doing that? To bow out with respect that inshaAllah asking that the permission to disconnect and that thanking Allah for that time that He allowed that connection to take place and recite your inner shaykh and Nabi like how we end our zikr. Our zikr is in association with Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad So it's not more than that. So anytime you make an association, you're ending your association, you make inner shaykh and Nabi that whatever I achieve, the ida at the end that we make this du'a is asking Ya Rabbi that whatever I achieved of any goodness that give to the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad and then his holy companions Ahlul Bayt and my shaykhs. So we're always giving as a gift, if there's anything good in what we did Ya Rabbi, we're asking to close it with the Surah the Sira Surat Al-Fatiha and they give a gift to the souls, if you found any goodness in what I do, give as a, that light as a gift into their souls inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Some astrologers are getting very famous because of their predictions. Are they actually magicians? People discuss them on serious television shows as well. Yeah, the, these, these type of people, their information from the jinn world of events that's going to happen or what they deem events to be or even if it's true, it's false. The Prophet warned for us that whatever you think if it is in the truth that you think is within it, it's still false. It holds no weight with Allah And at any moment Allah can change different conditions like them trying to predict the weather. 100% chance of rain tomorrow and then Allah will make it, no, it didn't rain. So they have a, a power with the jinn, they're connecting with different spiritual beings and trying to put out different prophecies and understandings and, and information that's happening. None of that is important as important to connect with the shaykh. Connect with the shaykhs and to connect with the Naqshbandi satellite system so that your heart and soul is connected into that and what's important is the, the, the information coming for your soul and for your life. So that not to waste my time on the, what's going to happen in Ukraine, what was the prophesied people who will be there that the tanks would be moving from here. But you need to understand what is important for ourselves from my grave. What are my coordinates for today, for tomorrow and that what does Allah want for me to achieve with this life that's been given to me. So I need to know about what my coordinates and what my predictions will be for my life inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam 
Can we sit for meditation without the Nakshbandi Tawis due to family issues? This is what I do, but will it benefit me? Use the Nakshbandi Tawis upon your body and your pocket. These are for your protection from negative energies and and sitting for meditation then when nobody is looking, nobody's around, alhamdulillah these are just for energy. Nashbandi Tawis is for your protection and the, these practices are for the protection. The tafakkur and contemplation is to can make your energy connection and alhamdulillah the two are, are you can do them separately, they're, they're separate from each other, different issues. One is that when you're meditating and after your meditation you want to make sure that you have your spiritual protection, your energy, that shaitan doesn't try to attack you after your meditation. So that's why we live a life of having these things. InshaAllah you can have it on your body, you can have it in your pocket, you can have uh, everywhere, you don't have to go around telling everybody in the house, I have this on me, InshaAllah. Mm. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi. While practicing all the practices, awrad, wudu, taweez, is there any specific dua that we can recite while in a very negative environment that cannot be avoided? Yeah, again like keeping the foundation of your energy, your wudu, all your practices. And then before you enter into those negative environments you can recite from the duas on the app. Dua Ayat al-Kursi, we have the Dua of Ayat al-Kursi, it's a protection when you feel that the energies are going to be very negative. And the most important is that you recite the Fajr awrad, that every day reciting the Fajr awrad, it's, it is a taweez for that day. So every time and it's all based on the, the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad the Prophet described, that's what he said, that if somebody tries to make themselves into ulama and say, I'll, I'll read the fiqr for salah, I don't want to follow you people, I'll just read the fiqr. It may take you five years to get through all the fiqr to find out what you should have recited to compile the perfect recitation for the fajr which is faraj is a salvation for that day and a protection for the whole day. So when you're with the Sultan and awliya, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani of the Sallallahu he already has the most perfected awrad for his perfection. He's reciting it for him that Prophet and then make sure it had enough protection to protect his saint. So when you recite that, that should be sufficient for the day. So in the fiqr there's SubhanAllah bihamdi, SubhanAllah Nadeem. That Prophet described that anyone who recites that in the morning, SubhanAllah wa hamdi, SubhanAllah wa astaghfirullah, will be protected if he recites a hundred times that morning, will be protected from every obstacle of the day. So it's already, you know, already in the Naqshbandi fiqh, in the Naqshbandi awrad. So the fajr awrad is, is sufficient to protect the servant throughout the day. If they're entering into an area where they say, oh, this is going to be like a lot of demonic forces. Then maybe Ayatul Kursi inshaAllah and blow up on yourself and, and go into that type of environment inshaAllah. Or as much salawat as you want from the app has beatific salawats for, for relieving difficulties inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu dear Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Is the quantum theory a spiritual theory? The quantum, quantum tuhibunullah, quantum is the study of light. That is the, what the awliya are teaching of malakut. Now in their sciences they go wrong because remember they're not the source, they're tapping in to Allah's heavenly kingdom and Allah allows them an understanding. So that for them to come towards guidance because that's their, their guidance, they think their brain is everything. So Allah allows them to tap into the realities what we call haqqaiqs of the heaven 
As a result of them tapping in, many of them come to an understanding, oh my god there is a creator, there's a fashioner, there's an architect. None of this is random. So Einstein came and said, of course there is a God, look who's fashioned all of this. Now was he a good believer? I can't talk between Allah and His servant. But quantum and the study of light is then essential in the last days so that people to leave the physical and the ignorant plane of physicality and enter into the amazing dimension of light, that light has no time. And that the, the, all their, their numbers and sequences and time and space and all of these things have to be called into question so that it broadens the horizon of the servant in their heart. So they're using their brain to understand these and the servants of Allah use their heart to understand this world of light. So Allah has, Kuntum Tuhibunullah, tell them. So this Kuntum and Quantum has to do with the love of Allah that if they love me they should be following Sayyidina Muhammad So that was the whole opening in the last two days that with only this ocean of love towards the direction of Prophet will open for us Allah's love. فَتَبِيُونِ وَيُوهِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ And that Allah will love the servant. When Allah loves the servant, He begins to teach them His heavenly kingdom, right? So if I love you, I'm going to teach you about something that's the finishing in five minutes. I'm going to teach you about something that's eternal. Well, Allah wants to take His servant, oh I love you, come to my heavens. You know how this bridge was made? Do you know how, how this bridge was made? Or, or you know like the reality of the banana? Do you want to know what the reality of the banana is? Those things are perishing, why Allah cares for that? When Allah loves a servant, He wants to teach that servant that which never perishes. I want to teach you about this world of light. So when they enter into this reality of the world of light, that becomes the information for everything on the world of form. If you, if you spend your life studying the form, and we said the inside controls the outside. So you spend your life fighting outside devils. All day long you go out looking for outside devil, outside devil and in the end you die a corrupt crazy individual smoking and drinking like in the movies. The guy's like he's working uh, for the heavens and trying to fight devils. No, the real fight is inside. So it means that you spend your time working inside as a result of moving towards the world of light which is the source of all the information in the world of form. If Allah draws you into the world of light you'll know how this is manifesting because it's light is what's controlling the form. If Allah take you deeper into that light means into the energy and the sound of it. Well, of course then you'll know the form because now Allah's taking you into the light, into the energy of the reality, into the sound of its reality. All of that is what makes that form to manifest. So definitely it's, that's when Allah loves you, He guides you towards the source of how manifesting. That's why this uloom and these knowledges of the manifest world is not the difficult. It was traversing into the oceans of the light and the oceans of reality, yusabbihu wa bahamdi. For Allah says, verily everything is praising me. That's a big statement in the oceans of Malakut and Allah says, nobody knows it, it's praise but the people of tafakkur. So that means then there are people whom Allah grants the understanding of praise. Can you imagine that if Allah grant you the understanding of what this praise is that makes this thing to manifest. What's the praise of the mountain? What is that zikr of that mountain that making that mountain to manifest? What's the praise of that animal, that bird and that was given to Sayyidina Sulaiman? He could hear the praise and understood the common denominator because he's in the world of light hearing it. 
and understanding what it's asking for because the animal wasn't talking to him. But through its energy it was able to pick up what that animal was saying and what creatures were saying, what the ants were saying. Or if that was Sayyidina Sulaiman and that's when the last day that power comes onto this earth. That was the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that wasn't being shown. So the Sulaimaniyya Tajalli is what will be dressed upon the nation to come against the Dajjal and what Dajjal is doing. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Can you please explain 666 number reality as they say it is the number of the beast? Yes we said the three triangles are 60 degrees. So you put a triangle 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. But we don't have zero. So we have nuq, it would be a six, a six and a six with just little dots. So there's a triangle up which is 666 and triangle down which is 666. Three and three is six, six times six is 36. So perfection is that you understood the triangle up and you understood the triangle down. As a result Allah opened for you the reality of Surat Al-Yaseen wasallam, 36 in the heart of Qur'an. Dajjal comes to say that, no there's no soul, let's just do the 666 of the world. So he represents the opening of just the material desires. He tries to fool people saying it's from the heavens and he covers the one eye that he doesn't have power with. But it's actually he's only opening the material world and that's why you see all of his influencers being paid big salaries, hundred million, hundred million because they're killing hundreds of millions of people and destroying hundreds of millions of souls. So he pays, he's paying them big money to destroy people. They go out and put out a record, you know, 100 million people follow them, come 50,000 to a concert, 20 million downloads, 100 million, I think of 112 million on Instagram, some of his big influencers. Of course he's paying them and because they sold their souls. So that reality of 666 is then the Dajjal opening only the Hayat al-Dunya that this life is the only thing you should have enjoyment from. But common and to be perfected is that we have to open the reality of the heavens, Hayat al the Malakut and the oceans of Allah's eternal oceans of Al-Hayat and then discipline the desires of the body. As a result then the 36 is the perfection. And then we have a whole section on the two triangles and understanding how to discipline the soul and that soul will discipline the physicality. Maqam al-Ihsan is the, is the height of the soul's perfection. Your Islam on your right chest and Iman within your heart. Islam, Iman wal Maqam al-Ihsan is what you have to achieve for the soul. If you achieve your Islam you achieve your iman into your heart because I'm reversed on the camera but where my logo is, is my heart. So Islam is my submission of my body, iman is in my qalb. And then the light of Maqam al-Ihsan will shine from your face, this is why the head is like the moon. So if the upper reality of the soul is achieved then it can discipline all of the ignorance of the lower body, right? So their lower body because they don't have the reality of the top, their lower triangle is based on ignorance. As a result of ignorance they have anger in their heart which is the, is the opposite of faith. So they're ignorant, they don't understand the heavens and the realities of what's coming. They have anger within their heart and as a result their lower body is just fire, fiery desires, fiery character.
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa If we put many ta'weezes in the home, but because of living with other people that do things that may bring negative energies, will the ta'weez be sufficient to help? Yeah, you don't have to put many in the home, it's not the abundance of ta'weezes that make them more powerful. We said before the ta'weez is something from paradise, it doesn't even need to be seen. It's the, the ones whom are scared of the ta'weez, they see it, they see the energy of it. You don't have to see it because you don't see what the energy is. So the ta'weez on the window, ta'weez in the room and the ta'weez in the car, then the alhamdulillah that should be sufficient for these difficulties and if the people whom you love, if they can wear the ta'weez on their neck then alhamdulillah protect them from bad actions and bad character. The zikr in the house, as soon as the zikr starts you put it on the speakers if you can and let the zikr to emanate within the home for its energy and for its blessings inshaAllah. And then your prayers and du'as and everything that you're asking that Allah inshaAllah Grant the du'as and acceptance but again our life is about dealing with difficulties and, and not necessarily getting rid of difficulties. They really Allah give everybody a condition and they have to be sort of understanding of that condition, patient through their difficulty until Allah grants them understanding, inshaAllah. Uh, as alaikum uh, Wa alaikum as salaam wa Please Shaykh, is it possible to know, to know more from your knowledge about the phenomena in which a person visualizes his own soul? Visualizes his own soul? Yeah, that's what we are calling tafakkur. But instead of trying to visualize your soul, make the connection with the shaykhs and the world of light and enter into the oceans of power that I don't need to see something, I just want to enter into God's power and oceans of power and, and energy and make the connection, don't, don't lose oneself into the imaginary world. So then every day would be a wasted day if you find out later it was just imaginations and hallucinations. So they're trying to guide us to the strongest and most powerful with the time that's left for us on this earth. If you waste that time, you know, just meditating and visualizing, I saw onion, I saw a shoe, I got a ring, you're wasting your time because things are coming too fast in the earth. Right now it's just to connect with the shaykh, ask that you just be from that fires. I'm nothing, I just want to be dressed by energy and get to a point in which the energy is dressing you and that's real, that you can take to the bank. Because you feel the energy, it's going to be used the way Allah wants it to be used and it's something that you can feel it. And that's what's needed on the body is, is the abundant source of energy to flow through the soul inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifood wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>